Hello friends, it is me yet again, uh, welcome to another episode. So yeah, on this uh, episode, we'll feature a uh, free energy device, and uh, this is just a continuation of um, part one, which I recommend that you watch first before watching this one. So yeah, this is pretty much the latest work. Uh, we have a large magnet, three inch diameter, half inch thick. It's got a one inch diameter hole. I 3D printed um, kind of an air vein thing. Yeah, the air vein thing looks like this. I designed it myself. And the gyroscope, which is a large magnet, is spun up with a hair blower uh, motor. I took it out of a hair dryer and it just sucks in air and spins it down this uh, tube to the, uh, the catcher. If you look closely, you'll see that it's not actually, like there's a little gap there. So I 3D printed all this stuff and got it uh, basically perfect, like as perfect as I could to maximize um, the transfer of the energy from the air to the magnet, like the inertial potential or whatever you want to call it. And the magnet sits on another magnet. Uh, Yeah, the magnet sits on another magnet in like a maglev uh, situation. It's basically at the point where it's weightless. I've got it set at that equilibrium point. And there's a second magnet uh, below it in repulsion. It's of the same dimensions. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm feeding it with a variable power supply. About 20 watts goes in. I have a single copper wire, I think it's like 12 gauge, um, it, one end connects to the equator of the magnet, uh, the block wall of the magnetic field if you're familiar with what a magnetic field looks like, and then underneath, yeah I have this set up, like this might not be very um, this might not be ideal because uh, what I should have done maybe is just connected, um, had an all metal bearing and so there'd be like an electrical, it would be electrically connected to the shaft and the, the wheels would be like the ceramic balls, or sorry, the, the metal balls would be um, the kind of like the brushes, I guess. In this setup, it's not connected to the shaft, so I have to use a second brush down there. So in a future experiment, I might change that. And uh, yeah. So I'm just gonna turn it on here. Uh, the thing will go, well, I don't actually know how fast it will go because I stopped it at 4400 RPM, it keeps going uh, faster, so like it used to vibrate in my previous video but now it, it pretty much doesn't vibrate anymore because I was able to balance it, I figured out how to balance it, I glued a, a screw on one uh, side, I was able to find, um, to figure out how to like basically balance it. So. The vibration now has been eliminated um, for the most part, maybe 95%. So yeah, I'm gonna turn it on and we will see how much amperage I can get. And so far I've gotten about one and a half amps. The wires uh, need a little bit of pressure, so I have to physically push on them. Um, I did uh, have a bunch of brushes set up 
and was able to get 1.1 1 .1, uh, amps with them briefly before they wore out. And then I also used WD-40 to lubricate it, not really realizing that um, the WD-40 is electrically, um, it's an insulator, so it prevents electric electrical, it's not electrically conductive, so I uh, basically ruined my experiment. I tried to clean it all off, but it didn't really, I never got it back to the same level, so I just ripped off all of those brushes and kind of started over with this. Little springs would be helpful to push on the um, copper wire to get um, more contact surface with the magnet. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna work on this and uh, basically get a much better system. It's, it's still a work in progress and uh, yeah. So yeah, first I put a protective plexiglass protection thing so that I don't so in case it explodes I don't uh, get it in the face then I turn on my amp meter and turn it to DC and then I zero it out it's taped to the table okay now I'm going to turn it on and it's really loud and I will measure the uh, the speed with the tachometer. So here we go. Okay, so there you have it. Um, hopefully that wasn't too loud. So yeah, I think I saw it at 1.8 uh, amps for a second. 
So yeah, it needs um, it needs a little bit of pressure on the brushes. So I think maybe like some springs or something would help. And it helps if there's a lot of like surface area touching the disc, like preferably all the way around. And so, yeah, I'm gonna be working on this and uh, see what I can do. I, I swear it went to 1.8 amps for a second there. So that's, pretty much the highest I've had, I've gotten this particular setup at. I believe it's it's capable of producing more than that, significantly more than that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I did buy ceramic bearings, but now that I want, um, the magnet to be like electrically connected to the shaft. I these things are kind of useless, so maybe um, in a future version, maybe I'll, I'll put like an all metal one in between the two uh, ceramic ones, and uh, set that up. Um, so yeah, there's uh, there's room for improvement. I mean, I could. I could use a bigger magnet, for example. Um, the pipe could be fluted um, to increase efficiency. Uh, you know, the wind, um, this thing could be bigger, uh, like it could extend out further and then I could extend the hat of the um, the pipe or whatever you want to call it out further to have a more efficient uh, transfer of the um, what would you call it kinetic potential or, or something like that <laughs> and then even the, the blower itself instead of using this I could create the egg uh, propeller and modify it to become to use uh, air instead of water and that would increase the efficiency of this a little bit and I, I guess, of course, uh, there's the thing about the speed, like, you know, it's um, getting it to 4,400 RPM is actually probably the minimum uh, speed that you want to go. You know, it's preferable to get it higher, like maybe six or 7,000 RPM or even, even higher if you can, maybe 10,000 RPM. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, the whole thing is uh, sits on met or, uh, springs to isolate the vibration. Um, I may um, I'm gonna add more wires, of course, like this, and get the entire circumference, um, preferably. Um, surrounded by copper wires like this. So the entire circumference of the magnet is in contact with uh, with copper. And uh, yeah, I mean a mercury, um, using mercury would be the, be the ultimate, but uh, <laughs> that's kind of out of my, um, the scope of my abilities, I think at the moment. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, Thanks for watching and I'll see you all again next time. Bye for now.